Another topic that we want to talk about is related to the global or microscoping uh, features, which is related to the temporal profile and the growth for pure element solid. Okay, and we said for pure element, the solidification or is specifically the growth of existing solid into the liquid quite often would be determined by heat conduction. How much of the heat can be extracted away from the system determines how fast the solidification happens of how fast existing crystal would grow into the liquid. That's the rate determining factor for pure element uh, solidification from liquid. Okay, and the first scenario is for solid, the pure element solid grows into a superheated liquid. By saying superheated liquid, we mean the liquid temperature is normal and higher than the solid temperature, or what we show here, TS for solid temperature is lower than liquid temperature. This is what we mean by superheated liquid. Okay, and the the schematic here shows the situation on both sides of the solid and liquid interface. Here, this is our interface between solid and liquid, and the vertical axis we represent the temperature. And we would have the solid line means the temperature profile, temperature profile for solid side and liquid side. For simplicity, we assume the temperature changes linearly with respect to location or distance from the solid liquid interface here. Okay, and the vertical axis is for temperature. And as we illustrated here, the liquid temperature is higher than solid temperature. The liquid temperature on the right side is higher than the solid temperature on the left side, which satisfy our so-called superheated condition, which means liquid temperature is higher than solid. Okay. And this scenario happens when we pour hot liquid into a cold mold and the, the mold wall is colder than the liquid and you are extracting heat away from the mold or from the solid side okay and the liquid side is hotter and the, the deeper into the liquid the higher the temperature the deeper into the solid the lower the temperature okay this is the scenario and at the interface between solid and the liquid solid here we mean the first bit of solid crystal that formed versus the liquid at the interface the temperature is equilibrium melting temperature or tm okay under such situation we mentioned the solidification rate or essentially the growth rate of existing solid is primarily determined by heat conduction or how fast one can extract heat away from the system in this case into the deeper solid okay and uh, to get an idea of the rate we need to consider the balance of heat flow and to get balance of heat flow we have to introduce a few terms okay here we plot still left side solid, right side liquid, and we said solid side is colder, so naturally the heat would flow from the higher temperature liquid side into the lower temperature, which is solid side. This is the direction of heat flow from right to left, from high temperature to low temperature, from hotter liquid into colder solid. Okay, and then we introduce a few terms. Kappa S means thermal conductivity of the solid phase, single element. Kappa L means thermal conductivity of the liquid. Of course, thermal conductivity means how fast the material, solid or liquid, can conduct heat away in this situation. Another two terms, T prime S and T prime L. T prime for temperature gradient, as for temperature gradient within the solid phase and uh, 
T prime L for temperature gradient within the liquid phase. Okay, this and what we draw essentially the slope of this temperature profile with respect to location or distance. Okay, and then LV is the latent heat for melting per unit volume, latent heat for a melting per unit volume. And V would be the solid growth rate. We said we are doing solidification and over time the interface between solid and liquid would move towards the liquid side. V is this solid growth rate or the rate of velocity of this interface moving into the liquid. Okay, then of course we are doing solidification. The interface is moving as what we illustrate towards the right into the liquid phase. So when you consider the balance of heat flow, we would get a equation something like this. On the left side would be the heat that is conducted away from the solid, which is thermal conductivity of the solid phase times the temperature gradient on the solid on the solid phase, which is the slope for this line on the left side. This is how fast does the heat flow away from the solid would be equal to the heat flow from the liquid side, which we have two terms. One term kappa L times T prime L. Kappa L is the thermal conductivity within the liquid. Con thermal conductivity times temperature gradient within the liquid, which is the slope for this line. But that's not enough because when liquid convert into the solid, it has to release heat. And how much of heat release is essentially related to how fast does the interface move? Velocity times how much heat is released per unit volume or LV, latent heat. So this is our balance of heat equation. Left side is how much of a heat flow into the deeper of the liquid conducts away. Right side is how much of the heat flow from the deeper of the liquid to the interface plus how much heat is released at the interface due to the local change from liquid to solid, which gives us the latent heat times the velocity. Okay, so we have this equation to describe the balance of heat flow. With that in mind, let's consider the shape of the solid the liquid interface or the stability of this interface. Let's say initially it's flat interface between solid and liquid, but then at any moment, we form a so-called local protrusion, a local solid protrusion into the liquid. Solid still on the left, liquid on the right, and we have a protrusion of solid into the liquid. And again, the heat flow direction is the same from hotter liquid on the right to colder solid on the left. The heat flow direction does not change. But let's say we have a local protrusion, okay? When you start to consider this equation, some interesting observation would occur. We said right at the interface, the temperature would always be the equilibrium melting temperature, Tm, which means along this interface, the temperature remains the same. Then, with a protrusion like this towards right, and the interface still grow, towards the right side or move towards the right side because solid is doing so the material is going through solidification the solid is expanding the below the interface move towards the right and the, under such situation deep within the solid the temperature does not change deep within the liquid the temperature does not change right at the interface the temperature is maintained at uh, melting temperature then this is our assumption, no temperature change in deep liquid, in deep solid, and at the interface. Because of this, you would find, compare the bottom situation with the top situation, our T prime S, meaning the temperature gradient in the solid state phase would decrease. Why? Because 
the temperature deep in here is the same, the temperature at the interface is the same of Tm, while the gap, while the distance from here to here gets larger in this local protrusion. The distance got larger, the delta T is the same. As a result, the temperature gradient, the Tms, decreases. On the other side of the interface, you would make the same argument. The temperature at the interface does not change, maintains as Tm. Deep within the liquid temperature also does not change. But because of the local protrusion, the local distance over the protrusion in the liquid phase gets smaller. Data T is the same. Data X, the distance gets smaller, which means the temperature gradient gets larger. Okay? So you see T prime S gets smaller, T prime L gets larger. The left side, T prime S gets smaller. K, thermal conductivity does not change. On the right side, T prime L gets larger. K kappa L does not change. So left side gets smaller, large right side one term gets larger. In order for this equation to remain balanced, and LV is positive, the only way is for the velocity to decrease. Again, left side, the temperature gradient in the solid decreases because the distance gets larger while delta t is the same. Okay, delta t over delta x is the temperature gradient and it gets smaller on the left side. On the right side, the, for the same reason, the distance gets smaller while the delta t is the same. So t prime l within the liquid phase gets larger. t prime l gets larger, the first term on the right side gets larger in order the left side gets smaller in order for it to balance. The only way is for the velocity to decrease. What does that mean is at the local protrusion, the growth velocity or the velocity for this location would be slowed down compared with the surrounding plane region. As a result, the protrusion does not grow as fast as surrounding flat region the consequence would be the protrusion would disappear. The planar solid liquid interface would remain stable, or any protrusion is not stable. Even if it forms, it will disappear or appear less obvious because it grows, it moves slower than the surrounding flat region. Okay? So that is for the first scenario of solid grows into superheated liquid, meaning the liquid side is at higher temperature than the solid side. That's what we mean by superheated liquid. And in this case, we would obtain a planar growth. The interface microscopically would remain flat, meaning any protrusion of solid into liquid, even if it appears, it would quickly disappear because it will grow at the tip slower compared with the other remaining flat region, okay?